Hi and welcome to the channel. Today I will present to you the benchmark results of the RX 6400 against GTX 1050 Ti and GTX 1650. The reason for this comparison is that in Philippine market context, the price of RX 6400 sits between GTX 1050 Ti and GTX 1650. For the test bench, I used an entry level Ryzen 3 3100 for the processor. For the motherboard, I used B550i Aorus Pro AX. I used a B550 motherboard so that I can toggle the PCIe generation from Auto Detect to Gen 3. As for the RAM, I used a G-Skills 3200MHz CL16 RAM. Radeon driver version used is the latest stable. 22.5.1 while for nvidia it is a 472.12 for csgo on 1440p high settings rx 6400 is at the bottom of the charts at 77 fps on pcie gen 4 and 66 fps on pcie gen 3 in this game the gpu was weirdly having a hard time when it shouldn't it's not cpu bottleneck since we can see that the gtx 1650 in this chart averaged at 146 fps meaning ryzen 3 3100 can output at at least that amount of FPS on any GPU. But RX 6400 wasn't able to maximize our processor. This is also true for RX 6500 XT where it is terrible at CSGO. The cost is likely an, an optimized driver for non-direct X12 titles and I will retest this game in the future using a better processor. Nevertheless, I think this is a loss for RX 6400. For Fortnite on 1440p and 4K epic settings using performance mode, once again, RX 6400 is on the bottom of the charts. However, do consider the results invalid and use it for reference only with what the GPUs can do when playing Fortnite. The reason is that the game itself will perform drastically different when you are at a building or when you are outside, or when you are in the storm, or when you are hiding in the bushes. You might feel that it doesn't make sense that the PCIe Gen 3 is better at 4K than the PCIe Gen 4, but to prove my point, I played differently on those two games. So this is not a significant benchmark results. Anyway, with all that said, consider these results as a reference that Fortnite can be easily played using RX 6400. I will retest this further using a better processor. For Valorant at 1440p, RX 6400 is at the top of the charts with 179 FPS on PCIe Gen 3 and 187 FPS on PCIe Gen 4. Note that RX 6400 is not fully utilized in this game while the two NVIDIA cards are at 96 to 99% utilized. Similar to the RX 6500 XT, this is a win for the RX 6400. For Apex Legends on 1080p max settings with texture filtering at bilinear and 4GB VRAM texture buffer, RX 6400 on PCIe Gen 4 was at 74 FPS, but the PCIe Gen 3 was not far at 72 FPS, and both were not far from GTX 1650 at 76 FPS, while the GTX 1050 Ti is way below the charts at 48 FPS, making RX 6400 a good value proposition in this game against the Nvidia counterparts. For COD Warzone on 1080p cranked high settings, GTX 1650 and RX 6400 on PCIe Gen 4 had 52 FPS, while RX 6400 on PCIe Gen 3 is not that far behind at 47 FPS, or it is just weaker by 9%, while the GTX 1050 Ti was at 36 FPS. While the numbers don't look great, you can dial down the settings to have a smoother gameplay. For reference, the 1050 Ti can achieve 60 FPS if you dial down all the settings. Anyway, in this game, RX 6400 provides a good value proposition to this game. For Dota 2 on 1440p, RX 6400 and GTX 1650 were CPU bottleneck at 90 to 100 FPS, but on 4K, they are at 52 to 54 FPS on average, and GTX 1050 Ti is not far behind at 48 FPS, though that is still a 9% FPS difference. This makes the RX 6400 combined with an entry-level CPU a good value proposition for this game, as entry-level CPUs will not be able to maximize this GPU at 1440p and below. For FF14 on 1080p maximum preset, RX 6400 on PCIe Gen 4 and Gen 3 performed the same at 64 FPS while GTX 1650 had 72 FPS, making the RX 6400 weaker by 12%. The GTX 1050 Ti trails the RX 6400 by another 11 FPS or 20%. This makes RX 6400 still a good buy in this game from a price to performance standpoint. For FF15 on 1080p on each preset, there is just one FPS 
advantage by the GTX 1650 against the RX 6400, while the GTX 1050 Ti is around 30% weaker on all settings against the RX 6400. Do note that in this game, the difference between PCIe Gen 4 and Gen 3 was negligible as well. This makes the RX 6400 another good buy for this game. For Forza Horizon 4 on lowest to highest settings on 1080p, GTX 1650 and RX 6400 on PCIe Gen 4 are pretty much at par with each other, while the RX 6400 on PCIe Gen 3 is generally weaker by 11% against its PCIe Gen 4 counterpart. As with the GTX 1050 Ti, it is generally weaker by 22% against RX 6400 on PCIe Gen 3. However, on ultra settings, the GTX cards pull ahead. The GTX 1650 is stronger by 18% against the RX 6400 PCIe Gen 4, and the GTX 1050 Ti reversed the situation and is now 23% stronger against the RX 6400 Gen 3. For this game, the most worth it card is actually the GTX 1650 for ultra settings. However, if you have a high refresh rate monitor and you would want to take advantage of it, then the RX 6400 provides a better price to performance ratio on lowest to high settings. For Shadow of the Tomb Raider on 1080p, on all presets, the RX 6400 PCIe Gen 4 is at par with the GTX 1650. The RX 6400 PCIe Gen 3 is actually at par up to medium settings, but eventually choked at high and highest settings by at least 9%. The GTX 1050 Ti is weaker by at least 33% on high to highest settings against the RX 6400 on PCIe Gen 3. RX 6400 is a good buy for this game. For Far Cry 6 on 1080p low to high settings, GTX 1650 overwhelmed the RX 6400 by at least 13%. However, for some reason, GTX 1650 choked at ultra settings and became at par with RX 6400 on PCIe Gen 4. As for the RX 6400, PCIe Gen 4 and Gen 3 difference, this is only apparent from high to ultra settings as the Gen 3 is weaker by at least 11% against PCIe Gen 4. As for the GTX 1050 Ti, it is generally weaker by 18% on low, medium, and ultra settings. But for some reason, it was only 7% weaker on high settings. As for recommendations on this game, if you value performance over quality, meaning you want 60 plus FPS gaming regardless of quality, then the GTX 1650 is a good buy as it is 15% better on low settings and the only card that averaged 60 plus FPS. If you value quality, then you're better off with RX 6400 as it is at par with GTX 1650 on PCIe Gen 4 and only 5 FPS weaker on PCIe Gen 3. Okay, for conclusions and recap, if you have an entry-level processor, RX 6400 is neither good nor bad for Fortnite and Dota 2. These games are CPU bound on lower resolutions and the performance of the 6400 is at acceptable smooth FPS. RX 6400, like its big brother RX 6500 XT, is also bad at CSGO but performs well on Valorant. I could say that I could heavily recommend RX 6400 over the GTX 1050 Ti unless CSGO is extremely important to you. Overall, the RX 6400's performance is really at par with the GTX 1650 and not with the GTX 1050 Ti. As for PCIe Gen 3 and Gen 4 differences, in my testing, this is only noticeable on ultra settings of games that utilize more than 4GB of VRAM. So in my case, Far Cry 6, Shadow of the Tomb Raider, Forza Horizon 4, and COD Warzone. If your game is light or efficient with 4GB VRAM, then you don't really need the PCIe Gen 4 as the VRAM textures can be stored in the 4GB VRAM directly. As for overall recommendations as of May 21, if your budget is 11k pesos, then hands down to RX64. If you need streaming and video editing capabilities, then you need to spend more for a GTX 1650 or cut down the gaming performance for a GTX 1050 Ti. If your budget is 13K, then RX 6500 XT is a better option overall. If your budget is 18K, RTX 3050 is a good choice. If your budget is 23K, I hope you can spend a bit more to go for RX 6650 XT at 26K pesos. Finally, there is an ongoing preview driver release from AMD which would address some direct X11 issues and would provide more performance. So I guess that's it for my video. Thanks for watching. Do like or dislike, comment on what you think, and subscribe for more unboxing and benchmarks. Bye! Clutch.